Kingsfield was a very polarizing game series. Released in 1994 by From Software, the Kingsfield series garnered a lot of praise in Japan for its intense difficulty and immersion, but it was panned in English reviews due to vague gameplay, strange comparisons to Doom, and the extremely slow movement of your character and enemies. While the games definitely had some flaws, often they were not what the reviewers specified. Most of the flaws were simply due to the fact that these games were years ahead of their time. Keep in mind that Kingsfields 1 through 3 were all released on the original PlayStation, therefore sacrifices had to be made to account for the console it was on. You could say that the games were dated on release. The combat is slow and primitive due to the ambition of it all. Although it's first person sword combat, which sounds pretty good on paper, it's composed mainly of circle strafing, rhythmically attacking and maneuvering around enemy attacks due to the lack of a shield button. There's no invincibility frames, no rolling, no defending, and you have to wait a few seconds after every swing do this weird power bar mechanic thing. Surprisingly though, it works well, and it's pretty damn fun. It makes you feel like a badass outsmarting all the enemies and literally running circles around them. The focus isn't really on the combat though, it's on the exploration. There's so much to do and see in these games, and you view the game from first person the whole way through. Adventuring is mysterious and sometimes aimless due to the lack of direction given to the player, and there's secrets everywhere. Best of all, there's no loading screens after you start up the game. Everything is dynamically loaded in front of you, creating seamless transitions to different areas. This really makes you feel like you're in the world of Kingsfield. In 2000, From released the Sword of Moonlight Kingsfield making tool on the PC. Gives you all the tools you're ever going to need to make your own Kingsfield life. Sadly, the program is pretty cumbersome to use, and really dated by today's standards, but people still make games with it to this day. Yes, that's right, you can download Kingsfield fan games for free, and get even more unofficial Kingsfield gameplay. There's even a guy who regularly updates Sword of Moonlight in his free time, adding Oculus Rift support and jumping, among other things. He's pretty weird. Recently, a fan game called Marathia released. I'd only known about it for a few months prior to its release, but I found out it was actually in development for about two years. That definitely shows dedication from the fan game's creator, Ben Connolly, especially because the Sword of Moonlight editor is not very user-friendly at all. There are very few English tutorials on how to use Sword of Moonlight, and you have to use an unofficial translation to begin with. So, mastering this program is a very challenging process that may take a lot of trial and error. As soon as it officially released, I had to see how good this was. The first thing you find before booting up Marathia is a big ol' manual, complete with lore, a bestiary, and some tips to get you started. I thought this was great because it reminded me of the many classic RPGs that had extremely detailed manuals. Naturally, it also gets you hyped to start playing the game. Once I finally started playing, I was entranced by the quality of this fan game. Ben avoided the usual Kingsfield tropes and delivered an amazing game which could be enjoyed by people who have never played Kingsfield before. I say this because Marathia has a certain kind of accessibility in its design that Kingsfield, as a series, lacks. For starters, combat is more focused and refined in Marathia. The power meter increases faster, which speeds up the gameplay tremendously, and every weapon has a unique moveset and damage type. You're very powerful from the get-go, but thankfully the AI has also been improved. Every enemy has varying attack patterns, and they even react to your attacks. They can dodge, jump, and strafe out of the way, which makes them seem a lot more aggressive and alive. If your attack misses, they counter-attack intelligently. In most sort of Moonlight games, you can simply strafe around every attack in the game without effort. Here, the smarter enemies track your movements, so you have to change up your tactics and create different strategies for different enemies. This makes combat, usually the most annoying part of Kingsfield, fast-paced and exciting. Overall, the game design is easier on the new players. Since Morathia has a fully original setting, you can understand the game's story without having played any of the Kingsfield games. You're given more than enough direction, if you choose to listen, and the map given to you at the start of the game, ensures that you won't get lost that often. The game is more story-driven than an average Kingsfield game, which adds more meaning to the game as a whole. There's a large cast of characters, each with their own personality, goals, and desires in the world of Marathia. Some of the dialogue is actually pretty hilarious and well-written, and you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not read what every person has to say. 
This game just breaks a lot of rules and conventions in such a good way, to the point where it's hard to call it a Kingsfield fan game. The levels are fully detailed with original assets instead of prefabs included with the Sword of Moonlight editor. That makes Marathia stand out from the crowd. I can only think of two other Sword of Moonlight games that use fully original assets. The textures are all in high resolution, and they have a beautiful earthy color palette to them that unifies the maps. Ben also created all of the music you hear while exploring, which means that every song fits the ambience of the maps perfectly. The atmosphere is very misty, cold, and autumnal. The entire overworld is doused in heavy white fog which obscures the surroundings and gets you lost fast. Dungeons in Marathia are legitimately dark to the point where you can't see anything in front of you sometimes, which gives me a certain feeling of claustrophobia that I normally get with survival horror games. The levels are also designed to bait you into traps using the darkness, so your lack of visibility is used against you in clever ways. This style of atmosphere was born and died in the 90s, so it's refreshing to see it again in 2015. One completely new feature in Marathia is a crafting system where you use materials found in the world to create new weapons and armor at the blacksmith. It really gives you the incentive to go around collecting everything you see, from coal to rubies to a bunch of sticks. Sadly, this feature is mostly useless because you find new weapons at such a rapid rate and it may not work for you at all due to a bug. Yes, Marathia is a buggy game, but it's a certain type of buggy that arises when you push a dilapidated, decade and a half old engine to its limit. These features such as the crafting system may not work despite using the latest patch. If you have any problems with the game, you should message him on the Sword of Moonlight forum. He's a really nice guy, and he would be happy to help you. My only other complaint is that the game lets you heal a bit too much. I had five different healing items in my inventory and three different magic increasing items, and their only variance was how much they healed you. You also get two healing spells and you can regenerate magic with some special equipment. Although the regeneration isn't a bad thing in itself, the healing items should have just been limited to bandages, drinking from a sap plant, and bottled sap, as the raw sap is just another healing item that won't be used much once you get the healing spells. Minor gripes aside, Marathia is an awesome Kingsfield fan game that I would recommend to anyone who likes dark, atmospheric RPGs that make you feel nostalgia for the past, when 3D was a new and adventurous concept. It combines classic and modern design elements that aren't seen often nowadays. I hope that Ben keeps making games and starts selling them on a website like Steam, because I'd pay for a sequel to Marathia.